Guys, so we finally got an absolute insane amount of actual news as 10.2.7 is on the PTR and it really seems like it's going to be crazy when it comes to the actual story and the story development for The War Within. So we have not only for the first time ever discovered a model for Zalatat that implies we are going to actually run into her in this patch, but we have data mined the entire Harbinger questline names as well as the cosmological void stuff. It seems like we may be tracking her down, discovering one what she was doing with Galakrond and the Dark Heart back in 10.1.5 and it also seems like she's actually going to attack us and we will have to defend the Telegur's Rift. Alongside this, it seems like the Naru are coming to help us in our endeavor and when it comes to the Void Elves, this is going to be the Void Elf patch. A ton of new models, old characters returning, a really mysterious connection with Dalaran and the Kirin Tor amongst other things. So let's dive into all the data and information as there is just so much to uncover. Did you know you can play WoW on your phone? You can check in on your characters, you can play the game, you can even do minor things you don't really want to do on the PC. With this video sponsor, Awesome, allowing you to control your PC with your phone completely free, available for Windows, iOS, and Android. Awesome is incredibly easy to use. Check out my link in the description, download the PC and the phone version, and just connect it. The free version itself is amazing, as you can control your desktop, transfer files, but the real deal is the game version. It has custom keyboards for various games, other than just WoW and you can enjoy AFK gaming at any time, anywhere with game sound. Make sure to use my code Doron to get 7 days completely free only for the first 200 people. They also got a smart plug to turn off your PC at any time as well as hot sales with up to 40% off on pro and game versions. Check out Awesome! Finally, we got big news. We no longer really need to speculate what is going on in 10.2.7. We don't know, of course, everything right off the bat, but we have data mined like a million different items, names, quests. So you must have first seen the Myths of Pandaria Remix thing, which I gotta say did go a bit unexpectedly, as it's more related to this new experiment thing that Blizzard is doing, like Thunderstorm. But it still doesn't nullify the theory I mentioned earlier in regards to Zelotet being behind this, as the official information on the website states that the infinite dragon fight is behind this entire time travel scenario and very likely Zelda that is involved because remember 10.1.5 when she took the Galakron's heart was the infinite dragon fight as well. Plus the dark heart of Yasharaj, the dark heart artifact theory still kind of stands. However we have determined about 30 new quests related to the harbinger which is almost certainly the harbinger quest line that was announced on the official roadmap for 2024 and so far what we can tell with the names it doesn't seem like this is really all that Yashiraj or Pandaria related, but instead we are looking more towards the cosmological void and the void elves in particular, as thus far we have determined most information about the void elves and it looks like this patch is going to be the Randorai patch. Big parts of the patch are of course going to also be the troll in the Drena heritage questline, thus far we have determined the armor sets which are pretty cool, but the entire questline will be encrypted until release, which is probably going to happen around June, Blizzard devs actually told us this on Twitter, but it is possible we can determine some items or names that could sort of explain the storyline and what it could be about in general terms. So as I said, there is an absolute ton of news and I'm not even really sure where to start. We got the Harbinger quest lines, million assets, some changes to the old world that hint big things, but let us start with the most important part. We just datamined Zelotet's first model in the game. Now, Zelotet has appeared in the game in the past as a dagger and as a regular Void Elf, but the new model that was built for the cinematic for the War Within announcement on BlizzCon was now adapted to the actual game, and this is 100% a big sign that she's going to directly appear in the game in this patch. Remember, we had only seen a shadow in the dragon fight in that portal in 10.1.5. Last time we actually saw Zelotet, right next to us was in BFA, if we discount the recent season of Discovery Hints. Based on the names and a lot of other updates, this patch is heavily going to be related to the Void Elves, as I previously said. First of all, the entire Telegraph Rift has been significantly updated, and I'll get to that in a different video, as there is a lot to cover, but we got so many new models. We got new tables, barrels, orbs, lanterns, weapons, just a million different new render eye assets with a brand new unique aesthetic that is essentially evidence that they will soon play a pretty significant 
control. Even more importantly, their actual leader outside of Valyria has been added to the PTR, Magister Umbrek, and he has actually been encrypted on purpose, which means the storyline is going to involve him heavily. Seeing that he is encrypted, this is also very likely going to be spoiler heavy. Even more importantly, we discovered Kirin Torn banners directing the potentially new Void Elf capital right next to a Void portal, and this is directly related to the other update they did, and that is the fact that Delran has actually been updated. No one really saw them doing anything with Delran in the Legion zone. They removed the Worgen and the Forsaken, brought back the old factions, and there are some hints that Magister Umbrick could potentially become a part of the Council of Six, which is also a hint for Midnight as well, and the Elven reunion that they announced, as they seem to be slowly accepting the Void Elves back and getting them back in line. Now let's get to the good stuff, and that is the Harbinger questline. You might remember the Harbinger quest, he been already revealed back when they announced the roadmap for 2024, and this essentially confirmed that Zaltet is going to come back. Keep this in mind, 10.2.7 is the final patch of Dragonflight. Well, technically 10.2 was really the ending of the Dragonflight storyline and everything Dragons and Dragon Isles related. The other patches really kind of setting things up, getting the Night Elves a new capital, bringing back Ilneas, and 10.2.7 by all accounts seems to be the bridge between Dragonflight and War Within. So we're going to finally see Zaldad in this patch, we're going to get the Azeroth Whispers in the pre-patch that are going to set things up for Kazakar, and we are set for at least later this year when things will start spiraling out of control, so Really, the war within is already starting. Now, in regards to these quest lines, we don't officially know what they are exactly. We have determined 13 different names, and some names are very self explanatory, while others just seem to be a play on words. Some are even StarCraft references, so we can't really see what is going on. My thoughts are based on all the names is that Zelda is coming back, or that Alyria and the Void Elves started tracking her down and following her activities, and we're going to join them in this journey. The first quest is called just the Harbinger, so probably us discovering that Zealot is a threat and that the Void Elves are tracking her. The next quest is named Door to the Renderai, which is also kind of self-explanatory. It says that the Void Elves are directly involved and that this entire quest line is going to be Renderai based. The next two quests are called the Rift Walker Reports and the Cracks in the Void. Personally, my opinion is that this is a part of the tracking process, so we know that she's moving somehow through the Void and we are discovering her tracks and following what she's doing. This culminates in the quest named Galakron's Unrest, which in my opinion is going to be us discovering why she was present with the Dark Heart artifact the Riddicron took, and we are going to finally learn what exactly she was doing with the essence of Galakrond in that portal. Remember, Galakrond had a huge hunger that turned him into the first undead on Azeroth and a giant monstrosity, but even more interestingly, he was also corrupted by Yogg-Saron, so she could have taken the essence of the old god Yogg-Saron through Galakrond. The next two quest lines are probably us following her, walk in her shadows and dark descension. I'm guessing we get closer to her, then we descend more into the shadows, the void, and then we got two pretty vague quest names, Legacy of the Void. <laughs> Pretty clear an easter egg for Starcraft 2, and the path taken is you know, really hard to say what it is. Here's the thing though, the quest after this seemed to be already telling us what is going to happen, and B1 Traveler, long I stood, of course super wake, but defend Telegram Swift is the most self-explanatory of them all, which kind of makes it easy to predict where this entire storyline is going to be based on. It really seems like we might get on her track, and she probably sees us, and now she needs to escape from us, so she sends an assault avoid assault upon the void elf base which is probably going to stop our search and we're going to lose her personally i doubt she's going to attack us directly this early however the next two quest names are super interesting the first null and void are obviously another joke name that probably means that we managed to repel this attack but the radiant warnings is potentially the most interesting out of all these quest names radiant immediately kind of reminds you of the light and the naru you know they're known as the radiant beings of the light so potentially in our search for the Harbinger, we might get the assistance of the Naru, which is going to be a huge setup for a future storyline. Now, the entire Padera Rhythmix thing could be entirely unrelated to everything, as this seems like a PvE version of Plunderstorm. However, I feel like it is just too much of a coincidence. I mean, they could have done it on any other continent than this. Also, the fact that the artifact Zaltar is wielding is called the Dark Heart, and the fact that the Asherage's heart is called the Dark Heart of Pandaria. Plus, and this is the most important fact, we are traveling back in time in the actual game game when the Dark Heart could potentially be taken, so I really feel like this is one huge scenario that while being a fun new experiment in regards to the gameplay is ultimately going to be related to Zelotad and her plan for Kazlagar and the War Within. Sure, it 
seems like the Harbinger quest line is cosmological void based and related to the void elves and the Telegraph Rift, and it seems like we are tracking her through the void timeways. However, keep in mind, we don't really know what exactly is going on, where this starts, where this quest line ends. It is possible that we discover she is after the heart of Yashiraj, and that is why we even began tracking her in the first place. It is also possible that this entire quest line is just a diversion tactic and that she wants to get our attention out of Pandaria, where she wants to grab the heart. The reason I think the Pandaria thing is related to the storyline is because on the official website it is said that the infinite dragon fight is behind this time way time travel thing and that is why we are going back to Pandaria once again. Remember, it was the infinites that helped her get the essence of Galacron back in 10.1.5 so I really don't think this is going to be unrelated. Still, exciting times are almost certainly going to finally see Zelda in person, her plans are no longer going to be speculations and crazy mysteries, but they're actually going to start unraveling. Overall though, it seems like 10.2.7 is going to be pretty good for the storyline, it's not going to be just a cosmetic patch and some gameplay changes, but an actual bridge between the ending of Dragonflight and the beginning of the War Within pre-patch and the World Soul Saga. Thank you for watching, check out what the big crystal in Hellfall is by clicking on the screen and check out my video on HQ Reconnies in Spain by clicking on the screen as well. See you next time!